climber on belay, we need to get ourselves connected to this anchor, which we just tied with a portalette. So guys, I think for the most part, know how to do a flow pitch. Um, it's different ways of doing this. Well, you guys practice this at instructor training. Um, there's a one-handed way that Steve taught us a couple years ago, which is pretty sweet. Um, as you're setting this kind of stuff up too, you saw that I just kind of twisted it. I you know, made it and then twisted it around so I'm not in me, you know, instantly just crossed up. Um, really important here that you are close because if Pete falls, there's rope stretch, uh, everything's gonna stretch out and I need to make sure throughout this entire process that I can always reach everything here. I can reach the shelf, which is below the master point here. And this is the master <laughs> point which our uh, beaner goes into. So once I'm set and secure, then I'm gonna put Pete onto, on delay, almost, getting there. Um, yeah, and before I do that, this is the part that is the easiest to forget, and I just did, uh, is you need a backup. And this is critical. So you take about you know, three or four feet or so, and just tie a figure eight on a bite, and that's gonna clip onto a locker, onto the shelf of the anchor. Uh, and we'll go more into shelf, anchors, master points, all that kind of stuff at uh, ropes and anchors too. And you guys feel free to interject throughout here. Okay, so we're ready to climb now. Everything's good to go. We checked each other out. Pete's looking good, and climb on, Pete. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> Suddenly. <laughs> There's a fall. <laughs> Pete has fallen. Oh. Okay, oh. and he's injured. So, it's like, hey Pete, what's up? You okay? He's not responsive. Uh, he might even be out of sight. So if I'm communicating up to him, like, what's going on, man? And I'm not hearing anything back, something's <coughs> wrong. So after a minute or so of trying to communicate with him, I've determined that I need to get help. Um, I either need to go get help or get him. Get him or get to a phone, something. But I got to get myself out of this system because I'm I'm stuck in here now. Uh, so how we do that? Uh, first thing we want to do is go hands free, and the hands free portion is what you guys are going to do today. It's kind of the first step. So it's uh, really critical too of how you do this is there's a tendency and I know I had one to kind of start taking your hand off of this to you need to get the get a bite of rope through your beaner but we don't want to do that you don't want to take this hand off of here at all so the way to do that is to just pass a bite of rope up through the beaner and this is going to become my new brake hand here. So as I pull this up, I'm just going to slowly start like one finger at a time getting out of there so he doesn't drop at all. And now I've got this up. It helps if you hold it up like that too. So now what we want to do is tie a mule knot in this. Um, this is kind of a tricky knot. Uh, it makes your, your mind kind of go backwards. But the idea here is I want to pinch this brake strand of rope to the rope going to Pete. 
and because if you go the other way around it won't work so I'm going to pull this straight up and I'm going to create a loop it's kind of like a like a P and then I'm just going to pass this around and through and I'm going to tighten it as I pull up and you want this thing as close to the blade of ice as you can get it so that's my mule knot right there and I'm going to give myself enough of a bite here that I can now tie it off fairly close to that with a backup overhand knot. Now Mike's hands free. Now I'm hands free, but I don't 100% trust <coughs> this, um, or I don't want to 100% trust it. So I'm going to take a non-locking carabiner and drop that in there. Now there's no chance of this thing coming undone. Throughout this whole process, I'm still, you know, trying to communicate with Pete. He might have got hit with a rock and he's now come to, or it's possible he got knocked out and he can still hear, but can't speak. So the more I can communicate with him to let him know what's going on, the better. So now I need to figure out how to get myself out of this. Uh, so if we look around at what we've got here we've got all this rope to play with so what i need to do is get his weight onto the anchor so how we do that is we're going to use a friction hitch and we're going to transfer the load so you guys all know the the prusik knot uh, i'm going to set this here just so i don't drop it right now so you're going to take your hero loop or an auto block which you guys should all get one of these they're a little more supple and they bite the rope a little bit better say that again this is an auto block hollow block auto hollow block yeah and what should they do get one buy one <laughs> <laughs> um really handy they're very heat resistant too yeah yeah and they're really super flimsy they really bite onto the rope and you can use them for repelling and you can use them for rescue yeah basically it'll replace your hero loop and you won't use the hero loop very much anymore yeah and so just like um, with tying any prusik knot this is basically the sewn part that is like the knot on your hero loop we want that out of the out of the working business so from here I need to take an HMS compatible beaner uh, which you guys all got this is kind of one of the smallest ones on the market the DMM makes that can can uh, it's really lightweight can take a, uh, a mooter so we don't want this thing way up here because it's gonna wind up going away so I want to keep this fairly close to us for right now and now we need to create something else here on the anchor to uh, get this with. But first, sorry, Co, I'm jumping ahead. I'm just going to set that there because I'm going to need to come back to that. So I'm going to take this bite of rope or this piece of rope that's coming from the anchor and tie a moonter into this. I'm going to pull the slack through here as tight as I can get it and I'm going to pre-flip this. So pull it tight and then let it flip back across. Uh, reason for this is then when we lower them it's not going to be, it's not going to shock them. This is already into lowering position. So I'm going to do the same thing here with that mule knot. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because now you're doing it upside down. Um, so it just kind of makes your brain go a little wacko. 
but it just takes practice. Pull another bite through. That right. knot is a, an MMO, a Munter Mule overhand. It's kind of a combination knot. So it's the Munter Mule overhand. Okay. And I need to lock that. So now I've created some redundancy. I'm going to slide this guy up <clears throat> as much as I can. And this is a really crucial part too. That's why you want to take as much slack out here as you can. Uh, because this is going to move about six inches or a foot or so. And if it starts up here, and I need to get all this gear back, and it goes way up here, then I've got kind of a problem. I can't reach that. Um, so now we need to do a load transfer. So the idea here is I'm going to take the weight off of me and put it onto this. And then we're going to come back onto this rope once I get myself and all this out of the system. So it's just kind of starting over here, going over here, and coming back. We're just transferring the weight. Um, but there's a lot of steps to this. So I've put this other beaner on the master point here. It's another HMS beaner. And this is going to stay behind and as much as you can work all these pieces and it's starting to get complicated now um, but the more you can keep things up above is this is what's going to finish this rope is going to be completely straight coming to this master point so you don't want to bring it up underneath here then when you undo all this stuff, it's all going to get kind of jumbled up. So be, just be thinking management as much as you can. So we're going to tie another moonter in to this guy. So we'll get both. That would be good. Lock that. And for right now, we're just going to leave this guy here we're not ready to tie that off just yet uh, but this rope that's coming out of it is going to become a new brake hand so just for safety we just hang on to this throughout this next process and the reason that we put this here ahead of time is I still have two hands to play with uh, so I'm going to take this guy and we're getting ready to transfer over to this new line that we built. So I'm going to move that non-locker <coughs> onto that overhand just for backup. And then I'm going to start Sorry, guys. undoing this. I'm going to take <coughs> the overhand out and then slowly 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 I'm going to get this guy ready and as I'm pulling slack out I'm pulling it through that new moonter everybody see that okay okay and once the knot, the little bite there starts getting pretty close, I want to pull this thing. I've got my hand on the brake here, but I want to pull this into the brake position, which is parallel to the rope, just in case anything <clears throat> goes sideways. So I can yell up to Pete, might lower a little bit, and then pop that up and then I'm just going to slowly start letting that down and you can see now the weight is moving over onto this I keep my hand on this brake strand and as I'm letting the rope out 
then I'm pulling that slack through. Leaving myself just enough to get my belay device out. Pull the rest of that slack through. Pull it as tight as I possibly can, because this is what he's about to come back on to. Okay, so now Pete's all the way over on this. I'm still redundant with the rope, so uh, that's why we keep our hand on this brake strand. Because if I didn't have my hand on that and something went sideways with the prusik, then we're still backed up. Um, so we're just gonna do one more MMO here. And you'll see in that video that we sent out, guy takes this like gigantic bite out and he like ties the overhand like way up here. Um, just okay, but the tighter, if you have your, your overhand back up like way up top here and this thing starts to come undone, then that's all gonna slide down until that knot gets down closer. So, okay. Everybody seeing that all right? Kind of making sense? No, it's a, there's a lot happening here. So right now, I can move around. Um, if I'm on a ledge and I feel safe, I can actually get myself, take my clove off. So I'm still into that figure eight backup. So, you know, if I got a backpack or a phone or something over here, I've got a little bit more room. Or maybe I can get back if he's like over a ledge and I can maybe see what's going on or, you know, yell down to somebody. Um, and I'm still safe. Um, but I've determined now that I got to go get some help. Uh, so I need, and I may need to repel. Uh, I'm going to need all the gear I can i can take here so i want to get this stuff back and i want to put pete back onto the original climbing rope so i'm on the master point there i'm going to take this non-locker put it there so you just move this non-locker from one to two to three and so this locker and this non-locker are going to stay. It's pretty much all the gear that you're leaving behind. So I'm coming back to this one here and same thing just upside down now. Feet might drop a little bit, might lower a little bit and that's already in that Lowering position. It puts them down nice and gentle. And it looks like everything is as it should be. Take that guy out. I can get my gear back. And still all the while communicating or trying to, to communicate with him so I can figure out if he can, you know, say, you know, that he's got a cut or head injury or whatever, then I know what to tell the <coughs> rescuers uh, when I go find them. So the last thing that we do here um, is put it back up onto this. So if something went, went wacko, in here this somehow came undone which is highly unlikely we're just going to put another figure eight in here i'm safe i'm ready to go so i can take myself off of there drop that new figure eight on a bike in there i'm locked i'm locked 
everything looks good and I can now take that out untie myself and you can go back to the car and drive home and go get a burger nice. Very good. and then when uh, so I go get search and rescue or you know, say Whatever. I'm injured or something, and these guys just come back on their own. Somebody like Fred, who's sure. with uh, Search and Rescue, can come and look at this, and, and and they can see exactly what this is. Or Leader Rescue. You're yeah. Going to get the, you need to lower them a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so when they show up, they're just like, okay, they need to, you know, they'll probably have sent some people up already, and then when they're ready to bring them down. <clears throat> Same thing. Oops, I need to take my backup out first. If I start lowering with this in, that's not going to work very well. And same thing here. Once I get that bite in there nice and close. Pete, going to lower. Ready? Pop it. Pop. And drop and drop. Very good. Very good. Very good. Down. Are you okay? Very good. <laughs> Easy, right? You guys got it? Oh, yeah. Totally. <laughs> so did that. Was that